Right, morning fellas, welcome back to another Villa on Tour video. Yes, I'm aware it's been a bit of a while since the last video. Um, I've been busy with work, I've got a new job, um, and that's taken up obviously a lot of my time. So, obviously, Villa on Tour is not going to end or anything like that. I don't want to get too deep too early, but of course, I'm still going to make as many videos as possible. And of course, when football comes back next week, I'll be back with the reaction videos, hopefully. Uh, so, stay tuned for them. But welcome back to another video. I'm going to be talking about transfers. Players that have come in, players that might be coming in, people that we're looking at, players that could be going out. I'm not sure. Everything like that. Basically a Villa Roundup because it has been, like I said, a while since I've done a video on the channel. But just before we carry on with the main bit of the video, quick shout out to Luke1977. Link in the description to Luke. Uh, Max20 still works there. I think they brought out a new range of the day. Some top quality stuff on there. Use the code Max20 for 20% off. Big, big discounts there. Um, of course, massive shout out to OneFootball as well. Sponsors of today's video. If you haven't already downloaded OneFootball, what are you doing? Football literally, as I'm filming this, starts today. I think Fulham kick off in about an hour. Um, so no matter who you support, download OneFootball for fixtures, scores, um, news as well, because transfers are still going on for another month or so, I think. So uh, download OneFootball for literally any football news that you want whether it's in England, abroad, international, whatever. Download one football. Top link in the description is free on everything. Enough of that. Shall we carry on into the video? I think so. Uh, let's talk about transfers. What's going on at Villa? Right, so it feels like this is massively out of date, but Matty Cash signed. Brilliant signing, in my opinion. He was uh, Nottingham Forest player of the season last year. Um, I've got Max from the YouTube channel Match Day with Max, he's a Forest fan, to give us a little bit of a, a talk about Matty Cash because he better than anyone knows what sort of player he is. So Max, take it away, mate. Matty Cash leaves Forest then. A, a very disappointing day. I think a lot of Forest fans um, will totally be like that. Um, we can't lie, we're really disappointed that he's left. But um, it's it's a really good deal and I'm glad that Forest have actually accepted and, and, and they've took a lot of bids off clubs and, and negotiated to find the right one and Villa have offered of course 14 million um, plus fees and other bits and pieces to rise up to 16 million eventually and that's really good and I'm, I'm glad that Forest have done that because we've seen in previous years under different ownership and uh, when the club was at, in different times that we would just accept any offer um, that came in for a player. Uh, so it's very disappointing, but we wish him nothing but the best of luck next season and to Villa as well. And I know a lot of the Villa fans have been putting on Twitter um, how impressed the, 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 and how good the Forest fans have been uh, to Villa about the whole situation. And, and Forest fans have nothing bad to say about Matty Cash, really. I know, Max, you've also, of course, uh, asked me to kind of outline um, Matty Cash's strengths and, and weaknesses. And to be honest with you, I don't think there is a weakness, really. I actually can't pick a weakness. Um, I think he gives 100% effort every single game um, and he's very passionate and, and I like Matty, he's very all articulate as well and yeah, honestly, he's a great player. He really is. His, his strengths, his attacking threat's brilliant. I, I don't know if any Villa fans saw the goal that he scored um, for Forrest against West Brom in, in the dying moments. At the, at the Hawthorns last season. Um, that, what a fantastic finish that was. In, in fact, that was probably one of my favourite um, moments as a Forest fan uh, last year in terms of just fans celebrating things like that. But uh, Matty Cash, honestly, a class player. So many strengths to his name. I honestly can't list them all. He's defending, attacking. I also think he offers just something a little bit different to every other player as well on the team. And um, he'll always wear... He'll always wear the shirt with pride, um, so you've got yourself a brilliant player. Good luck with it all, and uh, fingers crossed uh, we join you next season as well. So it's really encouraging to hear what Max has to say there. Um, no weaknesses, um, according to him, so that'll be great. I think he's, he's more than ready, Matty Cash, to make the step up to the Premier League. Um, again, to compete with Freddie Gilbert for that right-back slot. I think in the back of the day, Matty Cash was a, an attacking winger, but... Sabri Lamucci, the uh, Forest manager, moved him back to right back last season. And, uh, you know, it's worked wonders. He was, like I said, their player of the season last year. And that's why he's got his big money move to the Premier League. So I'll talk about Gilbert as well, because as soon as this uh, signing came in with Matty Cash, there was French newspapers jumping on it saying, oh, Gilbert must be out the door. I don't see that happening um, at all. I think we signed him for, what, five million quid. Absolute bargain. Now, it took a, a, a little bit of time to get going last season, Freddie Gilbert, but 
I like him, I really, really do. He's the only bit of pace we've got in the squad. He's, he's passionate, he loves it. I remember a slight tackle he did against Arsenal um, last season, towards the end of last season. So I love Freddie, Freddie Gilbert. And of course, in a Premier League squad, you need that competition for places. So 100%, Matty Cash is a good signing. Him and Gilbert will push each other for that right back slot. You need, you need strength and depth in the Premier League, let's be honest. And that is something that we didn't have last year. So decent signing. He can play a centre mid. Don't mind at all. Now the second signing of the window and the latest one as I'm filming this is Ollie Watkins. 28 million pound rising to 33 with add-ons. Um, massive, massive signing. But before I talk about Ollie Watkins and my thoughts, I've got a Brentford fan on, Billy Grant, uh, to talk a little bit about him. So Billy, take it away mate. Ollie Watkins, what a player. You will not find any Brentford fan who's got a bad word to say about Ollie Watkins. And I'll tell you something, you know, we signed him three years ago. Um, from Exeter, he came as a, a young, a young, up-and-coming player with a good rep, but he still had a bit of developing to do. And the one thing we liked, he came and he just mucked in. He came in under Dean Smith, um, and, and 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 he just did what he had to do. And you could see that he had it in him. He worked hard. He started off on the wing, and 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 you know he started to score goals. But it's not only him scoring goals as well. It's his, his overall play. And as the years have gone on, you've seen him get better and better. This last season, we were meant to sign a striker at the beginning of the season, and that didn't happen for all sorts of reasons. So Thomas Frank turned around to Ollie Watkins and said, Ollie, this is your job. We're going to convert you from the wing to be a striker. Ollie Watkins just said, fair enough, boss, I'll do it. Then he turned around to the fans and said, please be patient with me. I've never done this before, but I'm going to try my hardest. And so the fans just sat back and we just waited and we watched him. And you could see him as he's working hard, just trying to do the business. First few weeks, you know, you could see it wasn't quite coming off, but eventually it just bang, it just exploded. And it's not only his striking game is good at, I mean, he's good at heading the ball, he's obviously good at scoring, he scored 28 goals this season, or 26 goals this season, but also it's his other play, it's his link play, it's his bringing other players into, in, in, into play. It's also his defending, his tracking back. He's an all-round player. Trust me, this guy, I truly believe that next season, if Villa have a good season, he should be in the England squad because he really is that good. He's still only young. He's still developing. Yes, it sounds like a lot of money, but at the end of the day, to me, if you're going to buy a good player, you're going to have to spend good money. We've done the developing at Brentford. We put it out there at the end of the day. He's going to play Premier League. If we had, if we had gone up, he'd still be with us. But we didn't go up. And Brentford fans, listen, we haven't got a problem with that at all. We sent Ollie Watkins off with our blessing because he is a fantastic player. He deserves all the best, and I hope he does very good at Villa. And I hope you take very good care of him. So, Villa fans out there, you've got yourself a good one. Have yourselves a good season, and hopefully, we'll see you next season. Again, massive shout out to Billy. Thank you very much for that, mate. Um, so again, massively encouraging signs and what Billy has to say. Um, I think it's a great signing. It is. Now, a lot of people turn their nose up. £28 million for a championship player, but I think he's more than championship player. He scored 26 goals um, last season, which is the same as Tammy Abraham when he played for Villa a couple of years ago. Obviously, that's without penalties because Ollie Watkins doesn't take penalties. He's quick. He's tall. I went to go and see Brentford, I think, three or four times last season. I think he scored in every single game. He's 24. He's young. His potential is through the roof, let's be honest. And I'm really excited what he can do. Like Magic Cash, I think, yes, he's a championship player. But without a doubt, I think he can make that step up to the Premier League. And I think he'll be our main number nine. He's got the number 11 shirt. Um, I think Nakamba's got number 19. Magic Cash has got number two. But yeah, I think he'll be our, our starting striker. He'll start against Sheffield United on the first game. And I'm really excited to see what he can do. I think if he can get, you know, 12, 13, 14 goals, that'll be a decent return. Um, and like Billy said there, he thinks he'll get into the England squad at some point, which I think would be absolutely massive. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see Dean Smith link back up with Ollie Watkins and uh, hopefully he can be our goal scorer this season and score hopefully a lot of goals to keep us up. Now a signing that I'm really, really excited about that hasn't happened yet, but it looks like it's just around the corner, is Emmy Martinez from Arsenal. Now as you're watching this, he might have already signed, but... I think this is a weird class signing. He's just turned 28. Um, I think he played 23 times last season for Arsenal. He's been at Arsenal since, I think, 2012. He's had six loan spells all over the shop. Um, but Bert Leno, their starting goalkeeper, got injured last season and Martinez came in and was absolutely superb. He played in the FA Cup final, which they won. He played in the Community Shield a couple of weeks ago, which they won. And 
you know, I'm shocked that they're letting him go, especially for such a, a small fee. But you see, it, look at it from Martinez's perspective. You've got that taste of first team football. And with Bert Leno coming back, you're not necessarily going to get that. So you want to move away um, to Villa, where you are genuinely guaranteed first team football. Yes, Tom Heaton's coming back in a couple of months, but he's 34. Martinez is 28, approaching his prime for a goalkeeper. So you've got to look at it. From the perspective, you know, long term, Martinez, fantastic goalkeeper. I think it's a brilliant sign and he's a massive presence in goal. I love it. Hopefully we can get it over the line for, I think, £20 million is the rumoured fee. But if we can get Martinez in, that would be class. Now, a couple of weeks ago, there was links about Romero coming in from Man United. But I think definitely now Martinez is our main, main target for goalkeeper. Um, Josh King. From Bournemouth, that's a name that's done the rounds recently. Uh, John Percy was reporting, I think Villa put in a £16 million bid or something. Like Ollie Watkins, he's very versatile. I think he can play anywhere across the front three. Um, so that's definitely what we need, players who can play in different positions. Um, I think he only scored six goals last season, which isn't great. Obviously, he was in a poor Bournemouth side, but... He can score goals. I think it was the 16-17 season with Bournemouth. He scored 16 goals. So there is a player there. I think he's 28 as well. So does that fit into Villa's recruitment policy? Is he a little bit old? Do we want to recruit players who are that little bit younger that can grow in value? I don't know. But I think in the short term, he'd be a great player that we can have. Obviously, he can score goals. He can support Ollie Watkins up there. And he knows the Premier League as well, which we don't have a lot of Premier League experience. So I think if we can get someone like Josh King in, that would be a, a decent signing. But for £16 million... Could you spend that better elsewhere? Let me know, because I'm, I'm quite torn on the Josh King thing, but if we get him in, I'll be happy. Now, the final potential transfer I'm going to talk about is Milo Rashika. It's been going on literally since January that I was talking about the signing him, but uh, even since we stayed up on the last day against West Ham, this rumour has been doing the rounds, and then it goes away, and then it comes back, and then it goes away, and he's in the Verde Bremen squad, then he's not. It's just boring at this point. Um, but the last couple of days, it has hotted up a little bit because his move to RB Leipzig hasn't really you know, come to fruition, and uh, he wants to move to the Premier League, apparently, um, but doesn't want to be involved in another relegation scrap. So it, it genuinely, I just don't know if this one's going to happen. Um, obviously, we still need another winger, I think the rumoured fee is between 20 and 25 million that Werder Bremen want for Milo Rashica. Um, I'll take it. I'm not even going to pretend that I know a lot about him because I, I haven't watched Werder Bremen in the Bundesliga. There's a lot of people on Twitter who are like, oh, that'll be a class signing, but let's be honest, none of us have seen him play properly. There'll be people out there that have and do watch the Bundesliga, and if you are out there, let me know in the comments what sort of play Milo Rashica is because I don't know too much about him. But what I do know is that he's a goal scoring winger, so that'll do me. Quick little last few points as well Ben Rama, that signing's boring at this point. I don't see him leaving, or if, if he is going to leave, it'll be towards the end of the window and if we get someone like Milo Rashica in do we even need Ben Rama? I don't see that one happening. Um, quick little last points as well the Danny Drinkwater interview that came out um, a couple of days ago where he talked about headbutting Jota and describing himself as a loaf of bread um, so that was an interesting one. Last point as well Greenish for England for 14 minutes that was a good um, good thing to see I think he changed the game when he came on against Denmark that Iceland and Denmark game were absolutely dross and you'd think a player like Jack Grealish coming in would change the game but Southgate I don't know what's going on inside. I don't know what's going on inside of his head to not play Grealish and play the likes of Eric Dyer and Harry Winks and people like that ahead of him. But nah, we'll see anyway. Hopefully, uh, in the internationals in October, he can get more game time. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much all for me. Transfers are hotting up. We waited long enough. We've been patient. Villa are doing their business now, and uh, football returns on Tuesday. I think Burton in the Carabao Cup or something. So um, we'll be watching that one. And then, of course, Sheffield United, the first game, a week on Monday. I'm very excited. Premier League predictions video I'm going to film after this, probably. Um, I don't know when that will be out. Sunday, Monday, no idea. But keep an eye out for that one on the channel. Subscribe if you are new. We are very close to 40,000 subscribers, which is mental. Drop a like on the video. 1,500 would be class. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Up the villa. I talk really fast, really fast.